How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Father's Day. I enjoyed my day today. Today's my day. I made the kids clean up the yard. I made them help me prep all the marinade for the barbecue I had to do. It's great. I had a great day. A lot to talk about today. Obviously, the fallout from Ca Clash at the Castle. I have a lot to say about this. I am generally uh, pretty positive when it comes to being patient and waiting for booking to play out. I know Drew and Punk is the program. But how many times are you going to screw this guy from his big moment? It's endless. I, I, I'm going to go deep diving into this because it, it, it's, it's bizarre to me on how they have booked this guy as he comes to, he has all these amazing moments, once in a lifetime moments, and they don't put the title on him. Also, AJ Styles going to Noah. This is a new relationship for WWE. We saw they did this with Shinsuke Nakamura. And now AJ Styles is headed to Noah. First time since 2016. We'll dive into this. AEW Collision. Man, if you listen to that Blackpool Combat Club uh, commentary during the match. I mean, I, I think we could all figure out where the main event is going. Uh, where, where, the, where the match for Danielson is going at All In. A lot to talk about today. Also, all the news as well. Uh, Dynamite. Contract signings. We also have the G1 Climax tournament brackets. They released that. All this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on X, I should say. At Andrew Zarian. All right, let's talk about this. Clash at the Castle yesterday afternoon. There's nothing better for me than a Saturday afternoon pay-per-view. <laughs> I could have done without the two-hour uh, pre-show. To be honest, I had the dual screen going uh, in my yard. You, you have to see it. I sent, I sent the boys in my chat. I got the boys chat going, right? You got all the bad stuff. You just yell at each other. You guys don't have that? One of the one of my targets is my on air producer here, Matt. Just constantly gets harassed in there. I had a dual screen setup. I have Clash, I have Clash playing on one, and the other one I'm watching the Euro Cup. I started off watching the Spain game. Spain won, and then Italy, of course, in the afternoon. I had the best afternoon yesterday. But you know this show was interesting. That crowd was tremendous. Not a not a humongous international crowd. 11,000 people there. Big story here is Drew McIntyre in Scotland. Home country for the title against Damian Priest. And the underlining story, you know, is Priest a transitional champion? Well, we found out. But let's start off with the opener. I quit match. Cody Rhodes def defeats, defends. Defeats AJ Styles to retain the uh, the undisputed championship. This went 27 minutes and 47 seconds. I thought this match was great. I did not love the ending, the finish, but I thought this was a tremendous match. Uh, at one point, Rhodes was attacked uh, by the Bloodline on the ramp. Orton came out with Kevin Owens. The crowd sang Orton's song. Uh, what did you make of this? Um. um. This match, yeah, I loved it. I thought this was great. It the was finish, little... did you like the finish? And, I don't know. This was, for me, this was the best match of the night. But, um, Really? You liked it I better did... than, than, the, than the main event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you'll go into the reasons yeah. why. I, the main event was a little choppy for me. Um, okay. There was a lot of botches on this show all across the board, but... yeah. Um, Mm, yeah, I don't know. I, this match to me, I, I, I could, 
I liked it, but yeah, you're right. The ending was a little weird. The ending was a little wonky. I thought Cody looked tremendous. Uh, he has done a great job at a, just how this guy transcended, right? From the time that he left, I think today's right. the anniversary of the uh, the terrible Stardust gimmick that he had. I think today is the 10-year really? anniversary, or yesterday was, yeah. Just, mm. you know, that guy, Cody, was going to be a future baked star. They tied, they married him to, uh, you know, early on to Randy, and he got that a nice little push. He had that IC run, and then he just went nowhere. This guy leaves. I, I mean, I, I watched him wrestle... Chris Hero in a Catholic school gymnasium. <laughs> uh, I think it was SummerSlam weekend 2016. That building was 140 freaking degrees. There was no air conditioning. Middle of the summer in a basement gym of a Catholic school in Brooklyn. And do you know what he did, Cody? Wasn't he, he like just super friendly with everybody? That man, he didn't have to do this. He stayed there. For an hour after the event and he shook hands and he signed everything for people mm -hmm. and he took photos and he had a smile on his face and I remember just you know seeing him do that and I'm thinking nobody does that nobody does that you know it says something about his dedication to to what he does his art I I, I have to talk I'm a big fan of his I think this is an incredible run for him he looks great as champion uh I I thought AJ was a great match for him, but it looks like we're going, it's going to be him and Solo. That's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. yes. So much Bullet Club, by the way. So by the much way, Bullet Club. <laughs> not to it's, interrupt you, but, yeah. but the, the the thing I think the match got away from me was how it the the, the stair spot seemed very abrupt. Like yeah, At the just, end? You know, at the end? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just when he was whole, all of a sudden, hey, I'm just going to, after I'm gonna do all this damage to you, and then I'm gonna hold a pair, a set of stairs, and you're gonna attack. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah, say, you're gonna quit. Yeah, I, and then that's I'm gonna hit I mean. you anyway. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna hit you anyway. I, I, it was fine. You know, it, it was weird booking though. Uh, I, the, the booking was weird for certain things. But you know, every time I ask about something, I was, I was actually chatting with someone that was there, and you know, it, it's, it's the same story. You gotta wait and let it play out. But uh, that can't be the answer every time. Triple threat tag team match for the titles, women's titles. Uh, this match, uh, there, there was a terrible botch by Jade here. Uh, it was a couple Fire and match. Dawn, Baszler and Starks, Belair and Cargill uh, for the championship. Dawn and Fire won. Yeah, this was kind of a surprise. But this was a surprise. It, right before the match started, I, I started thinking, I was like, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing to put take the put the title on those two because yeah. they are um they are part of you know that they're from that country and this makes sense is that this yeah. is at least one of the three acts from Scotland would get a win would get something it didn't look yeah. like any of them didn't look like any of them was going to well except Drew yeah. that that was the one that it looked like it was going to uh, right. I there was I, a there was a spot from the top rope where Jade kind of lost her footing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it was a couple of those. Snaps. There was a couple of those. Listen, yeah. I, you know, she's getting there. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem when that happens. You know, and the crowd didn't didn't like, I don't acknowledge either. it in a in a in a very American way. You know, like an ECW way that I can't say on the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I it was what it was. Then we also got right. the glitch on the screen. You were warned. Told to prepare. You will behold the massacre is coming. So it looks like Monday we'll find out, right? Because I think the date was for Monday. Yeah, the date said the 17th. So yeah. that's what we think. So here yeah. comes whatever they're doing with this uh, faction. Yeah. That is most likely Bo Dallas. In ring, right? Yeah, yeah well, like I, I yeah. now it, we don't know. Is this Uncle Howdy? We don't. I, they haven't I, said what it's going to be as far. I as hope a, it's not faction. I hope it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, I I mm -hmm. do. If Bo Dallas is very talented, people forget that this guy was the golden child in that initial NXT run. Yep, he they, he was beloved. He feuded with who Neville, right? 
He feuded with Sammy. He was beloved. It was it, it he I and then it just went really wrong. I hope this is a a reset for him. If he is continuing a spooky thing like his brother, I, I think you know. Listen, it, it would be appropriate for him to continue it. I I don't want him to show up with that that ridiculous hat and that that mask. He could do something else. He could be a spooky guy in a different way. But it looks like his faction is being put together. You know, Nikki Cross is rumored to be in there. Eric Longbeard, Eric Rowan, he's set to be in there. I hope Joe they Gacy. do something interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Gacy. Yeah. He, here's the other part, and, and we're going to go to a quick break, but and I'm going to continue this. Will the spooky stuff have the same effect that it's had in the past when it's done well in this new era of WWE? Because it is more based on the theatrics of sport rather than the theatrics of a horror film. Will lightning bolts... This new TKO version of WWE with lightning bolts and, and you know, uh, light manipulation. Well, how will the audience eat that up? I don't know. I, it's, the audience has grown. Uh, the audience is older now. A lot of those kids that were into it, you know, five years ago are, are a little bit older. I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue Clash at the Castle and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I want to pick up where I left off. I, I Again, I'm not... And during the break, I got a couple of messages. Hey, why don't you give it a chance? I want this to be... I, I want to give it a chance. I'm very intrigued by it. And if they do what they did with, you know... I, I The Firefly Funhouse stuff to me was incredible. In, in, in a very hokey time for that company, Bray was so talented that he made... This thing over, you know, my kids got, got into wrestling because of Bray. The boy in the red sweater, my daughter would call him. Can you put on the video of the boy in the red sweater? My daughter's like a little macabre. She likes a little, like, spooky stuff. So she was into it. I hope that Bo has all the success in the world with this. I really, really do. Sami Zayn, Chad Gable. I see title. Chad re-signed. A lot of people thought this would be the moment to take the title off Sammy. Obviously, it wasn't. This is continuing the story, obviously, with Maxine and Otis uh, and Gable. Uh, they had a great moment where it was the the Hogan-Elizabeth moment where Hogan held Elizabeth on Saturday night's main event and went back backstage and left, you know, uh, Macho for the match. I, you know, they shot it very similar to, similar to that. I just showed my wife that, by the way. MG. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I like no no. I, were you, was I chatting uh, with you on Friday? Friday night. Mm -hmm. I I showed her I that. Might have been. And, yeah. And she's like, "Oh my god, this was incredible. This was incredible." I'm like, "No wonder. Think about it, right? You're channel flipping. It's a it's a Saturday night. It's like 10:30. You put this on. There's these two lunatics screaming at each other in a medical room in a in a gym or whatever. And there's this lady just like dying on the apron. <laughs> it's the most <laughs> insane thing." Wild stuff. Uh, I thought this was a great match. I thought the match was good. I would have loved to see Chad win the title. What would you think of this? Um, I was okay with him not winning the title here because I think it's – I think it's – the story is he can't win the title, and he's just going to get more – become more diabolical as time goes on. Yeah. Now, yeah, I would – now, does he deserve it? Yes, but I think the dynamic that they're doing with Otis and him because that's eventually – that could be a very fun feud. Yeah, I like Otis. Yeah, I like Otis. Yeah, I do too. He brought yeah. up, do you know he brought up uh, uh, Tucky in a promo yeah, last week? Yeah, in a promo last week, yeah. Yeah. And he brought up, and, and Mandy Rose, he mentioned he mentioned my peach, he said. My peach, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling Mandy's eventually coming back there. Eh, yeah, I know she's I know she's doing, Um, she's back into the fitness program right now, yeah. so there's yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, I got a little itch on that. Uh, Bailey defeated Piper Niven with Chelsea Green to retain the title. This was a good showing for Bailey. You know, she's beloved. I One thing that stood out to me tremendously for this entire show, more than ever, okay? 
The new themes are disgustingly terrible. <laughs> I, I know that it's a meme and it's a joke. And if you guys haven't found this, it's actually a, really funny. Like on TikTok, uh, what, what's the group now producing their music? Um, oh, it's... Uh... It's terrible, whatever it is. Yeah, I can't so remember the name. They, of it they now. keep doing like, hey, if they this if the, that group you know produced the Undertaker's theme, and it's always terrible. Like all of them are really bad. It's it's comically bad. Like the Naomi one is so terrible. They ruined the Bailey one. Everybody has the worst themes. I, it's Death Rebel. Death name. Rebel. It is terrible. Like I don't, I don't know who thinks it's good. Like the, the like the Naomi one is is she had a great theme, right? When she would come out and do like the whole rave thing, right? Great theme. What is this? It's like fifteen seconds of her spelling her name, and then it goes into some bizarre techno trance. <laughs> and they all have that. They're all terrible. I, I it, it stood out so much. If there's one major correction they have to do, they got to fix this. I I mean, it, it, it's awful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I'll continue. A little rant. <laughs> okay. Damian Priest defeated Drew McIntyre, retained the World Heavyweight Championship. This one, 20 minutes. I really like this match, okay? I And I'm going to tell you why. We never, first of all, Drew, Drew looks like a million bucks. He got a great entrance with the bagpipes. Uh, Rich and I in the group were talking about this, how, like, one of my buddies, he's like, man, those bagpipes are cool. I'm like, yeah, this is like a normal afternoon in Bayside where we live. <laughs> There's a funeral, bagpipes are playing. A wedding, bagpipes are playing. Just a Saturday, bagpipes are playing. You're at the bar. Someone's loaded. Their bagpipes show up. It, it's it's really part of this town. So, like, I get a kick out of it. You know, I like seeing it. Drew looked great. He came out. Great hometown reaction. Uh, they kept doing that decibel reader throughout the show. It was hitting 100 yeah. decibel points for loudness. I, I mean, they did a great job. This match was two big dudes having a big dude match. You don't really see that anymore. You really don't. Like, the 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 present, and obviously, like, Randy Orton's a big guy, right? He's deceivingly big. The edge, uh, deceivingly big. These, But these guys are being sold to you as these are big guys. I I thought they both looked great. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a big Damian Priest fan. I love that he has a title, but I also think it was time for Drew to get this. Uh, Drew did a, uh, what was the flip that he did early on to the outside? Oh, um, is it that, uh, Swanton thing? It was does? a Swanton he, he attempted. I mean, it yeah. didn't come off like a Swanton, but he did a Swanton to the outside. Then another spot, Damian Priest went to do, I guess, a dive. Mm -hmm. And his foot got caught in the rope. And it it would have looked, if that was a planned spot, I would say that was very difficult to pull off the way they did. But his foot actually I got caught how, in the rope. Yeah, I love how Drew says, Drew says, how can I win the title like this? And he was like acknowledging. Yeah, hey, yeah. Do anything. He goes, he, so I have to help him get out or whatever he did. That was. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't I don't know uh, to me I thought it was really good I thought the moment would have been for Drew to win it and at the end you could have Punk come out and you could do a face off something and it goes it you leave it on that cliffhanger right instead what happened the ref whatever happened to him right he th there was a ref bump he hits the move he hits his finish he goes for the pin one two three four five six seven eight nine ten here comes a ref. They shot this so beautifully where you don't get to see the ref. The ref is going one, two, stops, and does the deuces. And it's CM Punk. Drew goes to the corner him. He gets a low blow. And that's it. Damien hits him and wins. How many times are they gonna are they gonna do this to Drew? So is Punk the heel? In that instance, I, I mean, they don't want him to be, but it feels like you're right. It feels I, like at some point Drew is going to be the babyface. How do you, how do you, boo Drew now? This man 
is thousands of miles away from he, where he wrestles normally. He's in his hometown. He's uh, his home country. This is a big moment for him. CM Punk ruins it. He didn't lose clean. He lost because CM Punk cheated. So what happens? Well, I think they're bet they're betting on the CM Punk, uh, CM Punk, uh, Drew McIntyre feud being big. And guess what? CM Punk's not there, and he's not there on Monday. Well, he's going to be on SmackDown on Friday. Soon. Yeah, I thought that was weird that he's going to be on SmackDown. I think I he's go he, Monday. I think he has a pl uh, an appointment to get cleared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they did mention that. Mm -hmm. So, and he looks big. Did you notice? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he put he's on some size. Hitting, yeah, he's. Do you remember when he got really Kofi. chubby in WWE in like 2006 when he was like coming to the main roster? So he like became like 200 and something <laughs> pounds because he thought he needed to put on that size. He looks yeah, incredible yeah. now. I I I just have a fundamental problem with this. I really do. You have Drew had his moment in in that in that Royal Rumble, and you know what? Uh, they're out of everybody's hands. His world championship run was ruined. Then you got a chance to do it again, and he didn't win. Then you had uh, the show in Wales. Didn't happen there. Now you had this. Is the story that he just can't win? He's just going to constantly get screwed? Or is the story that CM Punk's the heel? I don't know. We're going to find out, though. <laughs> I don't... What do you make of this? I, I mean... I how do you cheer for CM Punk after he costs Drew McIntyre the title? I think people will still cheer for him. I think, but also, don't I think you think that's idiotic yeah. also? Think about it, right? He knows he's going to wrestle him. He knows he's feuding with him. They're like, they're, they're intertwined mm -hmm. here. You don't want a chance at the title? You dislike this man so I mean, much that you, you, you not, you're going to yeah. sacrifice your opportunity to win the world championship? That's the story they're telling, yeah. <laughs> a match that you were going to most likely win at WrestleMania. Like, you couldn't figure out a way to, like, you know what I mean? Like, third-level thinking does not exist in this. It's very surface level with these bookings. Listen, but it's wrestling. What the hell is wrong with me? I'm trying to, I'm trying to break down WWE booking. <laughs> <laughs> None of it makes sense. None of it. That's your first mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's my first mistake. I'm trying to make sense of this. Listen, man, I want to, I mean, obviously they think they don't need a title on this. So, you know, they could have another big match with Damien in it for the title. And this is already a mega match. I get that thinking too, but just they book themselves into these bizarre corners. And guess what's coming up? Money in the bank. So another, another, they have two briefcases to essentially uh, book themselves into a corner on, on what they're going to do. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. A couple quick, quick notes here, and then I want to go into collision. AJ Styles will be facing Mara Fuji at Noah Des Destination 2024. This is interesting, this relationship with Noah. It was during the Noah event. Noah had said that they had a major announcement coming uh, from Yokohama on Sunday. AJ Styles appeared via video and announced that he would be at Noah's Budokan event. July 13th to face Mara Fuji. This also comes after EO Sky was announced for uh, the Mar uh, Marigold event last weekend. She's going to be wrestling on July as well. This is interesting. And there's a number of reasons. You know, you want to... I, I First of all, why, well, you know, why haven't we seen more stuff like this, right? This, on a corporate level, is smart by WWE. Guess what? This is going up against, you know independent contractor laws are they independent are they independent i can't even say that right now are they independent uh or are they employees we know we know this discussion has happened multiple times but you know if you're wwe you're like look my talent goes to japan we have work relationships and if an opportunity comes we have no problem doing this we welcome other promotions in we're not this small closed uh ecosystem we don't control every aspect you know, obviously plays a part with that, but it's also obviously very good optics that this is not the same company. And if you do come here, you can have an opportunity to do other things, other places. What do you make of this, MJ? 
I have always said I wanted WWE to have a an excursion program. Um, I thought it. There, we've always talked about how NXT has such their uh, training is so cookie cutter, and everybody turns out the same. Having an outlet to send them to other places for like a six week time will do wonders for yeah. certain things. I always my example is always Alexa Bliss. How much better she got when she had to work in the pandemic with uh, Eos or not Eos Sky, but uh, Kari and Asuka. All those yeah. matches, her footwork got so much better working a different style and just getting faster and getting better. I think this is a good thing if they, if they have this and they, they do send people over from NXT and other places to work, uh, to work these. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. I I think that's a great idea. Um, You know, styles going, this is very similar to what they do with Nakamura. Mm -hmm. Nakamura went to Noah. Uh, It shows that there is some sort of relationship between Noah and WWE. I do you remember uh, you, WWE was very interested in purchasing Noah when they were selling. Yep, and they had. I, I mean, as far as I remember, they had brought in some people to help negotiate that and bridge that relationship. Noah was never going to sell to WWE, but they were really. I, I it almost like they used them. Uh, but WWE was this was in the plans. Like they they there was a relationship there years ago. Something was going on years ago. I got. I cannot remember it for the life of me for some reason. But cool. Also, I want to see uh, this. Charlie Dempsey also has gone over there. So Charlie Dempsey has also gone there. Yeah, thank you. Chad Gable has re-signed with WWE in an interview with uh, Gorilla Position as part of the media uh, for cl- Clash at the Castle. You know why I keep I, I keep messing that up? Do you know you have written Class at the Castle? <laughs> For every single one of these (laughs) on the notes. Uh, He said that he signed, uh, recently signed, gave no details, but I think that's great. I, you know, he, listen, it's a big move. You know, you're going to, you're established there. He's been there forever. Going somewhere else is difficult. Let's talk about collision quickly. Quick notes here. Blackpool Combat Club opened up the show. Against... Leo Rush, Rocky Romero, TMDK. This was the anniversary show. This is the one-year anniversary show of this show. Um, man, what a year of a difference this has made. Did you notice how many uh, CM Punk uh, shots were in the video packages they had? Yeah. At the beginning? Because yeah, the whole was show like, was oh, based man. around him. Right, based on him. So it's kind of hard to... <laughs> man, that, that was, do you know, that hit until he showed up. Do you know how stressful that was? <laughs> like, we reported a lot of the stuff that was happening. Uh, but there was so much more. Like, he no-showed a, um, like a, like a promo video shoot. Remember when they initially made that collision yes. promo video? He was supposed to be in it, and then he no-showed it. They were working on like just like in putting his voice there or something, saying "I'm back," and then they took that out, and he, it was like he was done. He he did not want to come back. Like zero hour, like it was turmoil. But man, what a year has done to this show. This is a shadow of itself, and, and I love and I love Collision. But your one year anniversary, you don't tell me you're not doing it because WWE had a show. Be in your own little world. Yeah. I did like the commentary here during the Blackpool Combat Club match. Uh, it is it is pretty evident where they are going with Danielson and Nigel. If they don't, I mean, I would be shocked at this point, right? He's got to be involved in the All In match, if, even if he's like ringside. I don't know. No, no, they no. I, 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 they, they have to work the match. I mean, yeah. If he's healthy, yeah, uh, absolutely. If he's healthy. I believe he is. Okay. I believe he is. I think he was trying last year. But this was a good match. I liked it. Uh, it but, I mean, it's just a match. Just a match. It was It was essentially to set up the uh, IWGP uh, yeah. title match with um, Naito. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what it was. Acclaim came out. They cut a promo. Yeah. Yeah. Acclaim came out, cut a promo in the ring on the Elite. Anthony Bones was fined $5,000. 
Brandon Cutler came out to try to find them 10. <laughs> Christopher Daniels comes out and says Tony Khan reverses the fine. I, you know, I, it's, it's something. I guess, I guess Brandon Cutler and, uh, and Chris Daniels are, are in a program now in a feud. So we have two managers, two general managers. What are their positions? A liaison? Oh, no. Cutler is the lackey of the Young Bucks. He, he essentially has no power. Yeah. So that's the, that's the gimmick. And then I loved how he just took the clipboard and just slapped him in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, whatever. No DQ yeah. match. Deanna Perrazzo, Thunder Rosa. Deanna defeated her. Yes. I love a good I love a good match where they have jeans on when it's the bunkhouse. Bring oh, yeah. I, you like that, right? You like the style. jeans. I hate the jeans. I like, like the Shawn Mikey's jeans. Like every time he would have like a like a like a street fight, he would put on those dad Levi's. Yeah. With with the knee pads <laughs> over the jeans. Yeah. That, you know, that's and I never understood why stampede to me. Yeah, I those jeans, they were terrible. They're just wearing those basic Levi's that your dad wore in ninety two. I liked it. Thunder I'm dating Rosa myself now. It was. I liked it. <laughs> All right, it was fun. Hitch and Sarah with Gates of Agony defeated Dalton Castle. This is uh, it was something. Dalton got TV time. Chris Daniels' Father Day Extravaganza. I'm glad they did this. Mother Wayne introduced Chris <laughs> Chris <laughs> Christian Cage. <laughs> Uh, noted that today oh, was the anniversary. <laughs> I know, T and, but today, what? Yesterday was the anniversary of Nick Wayne's actual father, Buddy Wayne's passing. So that was something. Also, Cage said that Nick's father dying was the best thing to ever happen to him, <laughs> as it because led to him. as it led Nick to him. <laughs> he goes on until kill. Uh, he goes on. Uh, until Kill Switch, uh, what did he do with Kill Switch? He told Kill Switch presented him with a painting, and he yeah, said, "Yeah, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, the painting, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." The and painting. then, and then he said, "He said you should be more like Nick." Yeah, the so end. they're building that. They're, they're building. Yes, that. again, they've done this so many times, though, and they they start and stop with this program. But why? I'm curious mm -hmm. why, right? Because like they've mm -hmm. at this point, you got to pull the trigger, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. He then be. announced that they're going to go for the trios championship as a gift to his kids. <laughs> All right, cool. AWTNT title, forbidden door qualifying match. Dante Martin defeated Lee Moriarty. Uh, Leo Rush would make the save for Dante Martin. You know, Leo's, uh, Leo's back. And this is, what, the second week he's on TV? And he Third? looks really, really good. He looks really like good. He and he's always been good. It was just, you know... Growing pains, I guess. I, I don't know. I hope I, I hope to see more of him. He's really talented. Tremendously. Mm -hmm. Kyle O'Reilly defeated he Anthony Henry. And non-title. House of Black defeated Bullet Club Gold. Juice Robinson peed. Or, or, or did you see that move? He lifted <laughs> yeah. his leg like a dog to pee on, on <laughs> Malachi Black. <laughs> He's done I, that before. I think just all the shenanigans he does, I forget how comical he is because he was off TV for so long. Yeah, and I think it did hurt him. I, I hope that he comes back to that point of where he was before he was off TV. Well, that was a good start. That match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a lineup for, for uh, Dynamite here, which I like. It's a big lineup. MJF versus Roosh. Kicks off commercial free. Is it... Are they... Wait a minute. Are they wrestling? Yeah, yeah, they they did the angle last week, and they're wrestling uh, Wednesday, and it's gonna it's commercial free for probably the first half an hour of the show or longer, maybe. Uh, which I, I find fascinating. How, how did I? Doing this. Uh, you know what my my brain missed that. I <laughs> did not see that. Yeah, I was, saw that they were opening the show. I thought it was a uh... wow. That's incredible. <laughs> how did I miss that it's announcement? Really good. Yeah, you know what? Well, yeah. it was, it, it was a, I, I, you know what? I, if I remember our group chat, you might not have been available to watch that segment. Um, 
didn't because it was a whole segment where Roosh interrupted MJF. Yes, and you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Now, 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 a brawl. Yeah, commercial free, kicking off the show. You know what? That's a great match to start the show. Great match to start the show. AW Tag Title Eliminator: Young Bucks versus the Acclaimed. Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, Orange Cassidy, and Dante Martin versus Roderick Strong, Kyle Fletcher, Takeshita, and Zack Sabre Jr. You know what? I'm into this. Tony Storm and Mina contract signing. Swerve and Will Ospreay face-to-face. They're getting ready for Forbidden Door. Yeah, uh, Forbidden Door season for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean... But do you see, like, having Max back, right, in that opening sem, you just added an intrigue element here. I want to see him wrestle. Yes. And this is a company that is missing a lot of those guys. MJF is back. That's great. Uh, Adam Cole's going to come back. Hangman Page is going to come back. Kenny Omega's going to come back. Then momentum shifts. I'm into it. Very cool. Also, Jeff Hardy appears to be back in TNA. You saw that this weekend? Matt and I Jeff did. have reunited in TNA. I wonder if this is leading to them going to WWE. Little by little. Put them in the Hall of Fame. Why not? I think you could now. We got one last segment here, boys and girls. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the G1 really quickly. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show here on Sports Byline. Let's touch on this. New Japan unveiled the participants for the G1. Remember, two blocks again this year. Man, I'm, I'm thrilled. I did not like the, the, the multiple blocks. I like the two-block tradition. Block A. Naito, Umino, Takagi, Sonata, The Great Okan, Zack Sabre Jr., Gabe Kidd, Evil, Jake Lee, and To Be Announced. Block B, Goto, El Fantasmo, Yuta Suji, which is my, my favorite New Japan uh, personality right now. Jeff Cobb, Hanare, Dave Finley, Ren, Nar Ren Narita, uh, Yumi, I cannot say this. You are, you are, you are me. There you go. Yumura. Thank you. That's close. I, 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 I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, I'm normally great with these, but it's been a long day. The sun has hit me. And Takeshita also announced for the B block. I hope Takeshita goes far in this. And to be, to be announced, sure. there's another, there's another participant there announced. So there's two people uh, that we don't know, but this looks like a decent, you know, block. Who do you think takes it? Who should I win it? I think. I think, I think you. I think Suji. Suji should take it. I would love to or Shota, Shota Umino. or Shota Umino. Yeah, Shota could win it. Mm. Uh, it. It's it's an interesting mix this year because you're missing a lot of the traditional names that you've had over the last you know five or six years. There's no Tanahashi. There's no obviously no Okada in this year's. Very interesting. I, I'm 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 hoping that this is a new start for somebody. They could they could. You know, strap the rocket to someone. Y Yuta Suji would be the guy for me. Guys, I had a blast with you today. This was a lot of fun. We'll be back next week with another episode of Wrestling Observer Live. You can catch everything else that I'm doing. Follow me on X at Andrew Zarian. You can also follow us at Wrestling Observer on Twitter. Until next time, see you all later.